In today's video, we, we return to one of our favorite spots on the planet, the Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad area. So the last video we put out, which is a, a, a Q2 update, a 2025 update, and it featured the uh, Latin America North countries, as we call them. So Guyana, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. And at that time, we were looking mainly at developments. Well, in the last quarter, it feels like um, Renewed exploration is the theme with Guyana wells on more frontier parts of the Golden Lane and the uh, Ranger play. Suriname has 10 exploration and appraisal wells planned by the close of 2026 and Trinidad has awarded frontier basin areas to Majors, Seanook and ExxonMobil, possibly the world's most exciting oil and gas region still. Now in terms of context this is a quite a, a busy uh, busy map but uh, we'll walk around a few aspects of it it comes from jamie vinnells nice one jamie um, a passive margin huge sediment input we've got uh, turbidite systems fed by sort of point source canyons from the guyana shield to the south and huge accommodation space in um, the mesozoic particularly the uh, cretaceous uh, related to the opening of the Atlantic. Now, Trinidad to the north of the map is obviously a different setting, and we'll come on to Trinidad when we get there. But I think uh, point out a few of the features on this map. Here's the Starbrook block here, ExxonMobil operate, and these are all the discoveries. Here's the sort of the sizes of the what, net pay in meters per well. well. We've got quite a quite a good thickness of oil pay predominantly oil some gas this line here is the border between guyana to the west and suriname to the east you can see the players in here well hess we'll go on to that they've changed we've got um we've got shell we've got petronas we've got uh, total energies and chevron in the region showing the major blocks and all these channels these um, point sources the bringing sands across the shelf and down into the deep water parts of the basin here a very very thick uh, cretaceous fan developed here over to the eastern area we've got uh, low cretaceous here in the turquoise and uh, jurassic in blue these are sort of prospects that have been shown in the area now many of these prospects here in the east are a lot lot bigger than the oil fields that have been found to date in the starbrook block now they're yet to be drilled and yet to be proven but uh, exciting times watch this space so if we start by looking at guyana you will recall that chevron were looking to acquire hess corporation but there was um, there's a case taken uh, preemption um, challenge from both ExxonMobil and Seanook and uh, they were challenging whether the Staybrook block was actually such a significant piece of the value of Hess that they wanted to see if they could preempt anyway arbitration came out and yes it's going ahead Chevron is acquiring Hess and there is no preemption so we move on now, in Staybrook, um, some of the acreage has been returned to the government. Now, we don't have a map showing the returned acreage, but we understand that it's uh, sort of 2,500 square kilometres. The headline stated 20% of the blocks return. Reuters estimate it's only about 9%. We'll try and find a map in a future video which actually shows the area that has been relinquished and presumably will be up for licensing opportunities in the future. There were no discoveries in the relinquished acreage. Latest news uh, from ExxonMobil. Well, the barrel eye appraisal has completed and Lucanani 2 is uh, drilling ahead. Now, Lucanani has uh, been drilling for some time, but we've yet to see any results announced for this. They're using the Stenner Karen drill ship. Watch out in future videos. We'll give an update once the uh, results of those wells have been announced. Hamlets, well, this is a, another well. We'll see a, a map in a minute and sputtered on the 17th, 17th of June 2025 in the southeast part of the Staybrook block. Expected to complete in September 2025 and thought that it's in the sort of the gassier part of the trend. As yet, we still haven't heard anything. There's a picture of uh, the Stenner Karen. Looks a uh, magnificent vessel. Ranger is, uh, is drilling. Ranger was a 
2018 oil discovery. It was actually the the deepest probe in Guyana, reaching a total depth of 6,450 meters drilled in ultra deep water. Now there's uh, the trove entry for the Ranger opportunity. As we get more information on the outcome of the appraisal drilling, we shall be adding to that. Ranger, it's, it's unique in that it's actually a, a carbonate play, that uh, a carbonate discovery, and a very interesting area for it. It's lower Cretaceous in age. Now there is the uh, location of the uh, Ranger discovery. Barrel I-2, Hamlet and Lucanani, all shown here within the Staybrook block. Also in block, the uh, One Guyana FPSO has started production. It's on the Yellowtail field. It's the fourth FPSO uh, in Guyana and uh, it's got a capacity of 250,000 barrels of oil per day. It's in a water depth of uh, 1,800 meters, so ultra deep water again. Uh, in terms of a production update, well, I think we've seen Lisa is is in place as is Lisa Unity. We've got Prosperity. We've got One Guyana. In the future, we're going to have the er Eraha Witu abundance on the Oahu field, which is targeting first oil in 2026. We've got Jaguar, which is on the Whiptail field in first oil 2027, and as yet unnamed vessel on Hammerhead, targeting first oil 2029 and Longtail final one that we're aware of at this time targeting first oil in 2030 so lots and lots of activity now on the quarantine block well not entirely clear what's going on here frontera energy and cgx energy they're fighting to hold on to the quarantine block there's an article there pause the video to read it it looks like the uh, the license may have expired in june of 2024 um, but here we are still arguing the toss and uh, trying to understand whether there is going to be a license extension here or whether it's going to revert to the government once this has all been finalized we'll report on it they've uh, struggled to to find investment in time for additional wells uh, to be drilled for appraisal purposes or even to actually commit to a development so it's not clear whether the government has rejected this or whether it's still alive we'll get to the bottom of it and report next time now, previous uh, videos, we've reported about the Guyana 2022 licensing round, but the licensing process does drag on for quite a long time. And here we are, to, uh, although eight blocks were awarded and they were announced back in October of 2023, here we are still at, uh, towards the back end of 2025, still awaiting for some of these licenses to be signed. There are four expected to be signed by the end of 2025. They're in the uh, the shallow water areas and uh, they are S4 to Total Energies, Qatar Energy and Petronas, S5 and 10 to the International Group Investments Incorporated and S7 to Cybel Energy. Also, uh, we think there might be one of the uh, CISPRO Incorporated blocks may actually get signed. It does take a while for these things to uh, actually become active. Now in Suriname, Macor 1, this is Total Energies in block uh, 64. They're using the uh, Stena Drill Max. It's going to be the first of 10 exploration and appraisal wells to be drilled by the end of 2026. Water depth 1,200 meters, so it's deep water. Now Petrobras, they're getting very active in uh, Suriname. Uh, they've expanded their exploration acreage with uh, Block 66, which is uh, X Apache APA. They already have interests in Blocks uh, 48, 52 and 63. They're planning a three-well campaign to be drilled in 2026. The, the Kiskadi, the Roystonia and the Cayman wells, they're shown on the map there. The first two wells are located less than five kilometers south of Roystonia 1, and they aim to confirm the discovery's extension and test a potential separate closure. Meanwhile, Cayman 1 represents a bold step out, uh, targeting an updip position 25 kilometers south of Roystonia. Notably, this well lies near the legacy West Tapir 1, drilled in 2008 by Noble and Repsol, which failed to reach the Cretaceous sequence a success here could open up the uh, shallower section of the, the Golden Lane and expand Petronas exploration potential in the south section of Block 52. We wish Petronas every success. 
Also, uh, we've got the, uh, the, the expecting to see that Petrobras moving to try and sanction a floating liquefied natural gas project driven by the Slonia discovery. Block 53, well, this is Total Energies. Uh, they've taken a stake in the Baja discovery. Now, the idea behind this is it's actually just east of the Grand Morgu planned discovery. Now, Grand Morgu is, is the name of the combines Sapacara South and Quasquasi discoveries in Block 58. It could form a little potential satellite, a tieback uh, to that larger development. Planned startup at Grand Morgu, still on track for 2028. Suriname has announced that there's going to be an open door offering for acreage and it's launching in November of 2025. Now Stasoli showing a map here with these yellow areas, the yellow outlines, they show the acreage that companies can go and apply for in an out of round um, first come first serve basis. There are options for either a joint study agreement or a technical evaluation agreement or indeed moving straight to a, a PSC. The full details will be published on the 24th of November 2025, so we'll be reporting back when we have more information. In other news, Hess has exited Block 59. This is ultra deep water, anywhere between 2,700 to 3,500 meters water depth. It was relinquished back in July 2025. They had shot 6,000 kilometers of 2D seismic and 9,000 square kilometers of 3D seismic. Now, previous partners ExxonMobil and Equinor had left in 2024, whereas Hess had held on to try and find uh, new partners to farm into the opportunity. The little uh, inset there shows that there are some oil seep anomalies um, that have been seen on block uh, 59. And the map is also showing the extent of the, the Golden Lane and how that's moved across from Guyana into Suriname. A lot of seismic activity offshore Suriname. Stasoli, they plan a seismic survey in the shallow offshore area. Uh, talking about uh, 2,000 square kilometres in water depths of around 20 to 50 metres, so very shallow. Acquisition expected to run between mid-October to December 2025. Mento First Gas, we did uh, reported report on it in our previous video on the region. It's one of BP's 10 major projects to, expected to start off between 2025 and 2027. It's a, a joint venture between BP and EOG. First Gas, May 2025. It's a sort of 2020 discovery. Expected there's going to be seven more wells drilled on the development. Shell have taken FID on Aphrodite, a decision made in June 2025. First gas expected 2027, targeting around about 18,400 barrels of oil equivalent per day, which is uh, the equivalent of 107 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. Now, development still subject to regulatory approvals, but it's going to be part of, of the existing infrastructure in the ECMA region. So ExxonMobil, uh, they've returned to uh, Trinidad and Tobago. They left a few decades ago and they're looking to explore the frontier deep water area. The block TTUD1, you can see on the map, is a Trinidad and Tobago ultra deep water block 1. It's a consolidation of uh, seven blocks and the initial uh, investment is going to be of the order of 42 million US dollars, although I can't see how you can shoot 3D signs we can drill two wells for just that amount of money but there must be a sort of a staged commitment on the block. The area it's actually bigger than the island of Trinidad so it's a huge area and you can see there its position relative to the Staybrook block in Guyana. The block is over 7,000 square kilometers and water depths are in excess of 2,000 meters so ultra deep water. The 2025 bidding round results for Trinidad and Tobago are shown on this map here. There were uh, four awards made, TTDAA 30, 25 and 24. They were all awarded to CNUC. And then the other award is down here. It's the uh, TTDAA 5 block and that's been awarded to STIT Energy and, and Ground Ports Consortium. STIT Energy Limited, they're a Nigerian oil and gas service company said to have expertise in conventional and unconventional exploration and production. Well, 
Can't see there being much unconventional uh, exploration done in this uh, deep water setting, but uh, it's going to be interesting to, to see how they get on. Ground Ports Limited, well, that's a private company based in Trinidad and Tobago who are active in the, uh, the energy sector. So two relatively unknown players, well, certainly for me. Only four of the 26 deep water blocks on offer received bids and have been awarded. I pause the video if you want to read about these uh, acquisition completions, both in Trinidad. One is the Perenco completing the acquisition of oil and gas fields from Woodside Energy and also Predator Oil and Gas completing a deal with Challenger Trinidad. Pause the video there if you want to learn more about those. Moving on to our conclusions. Well, the theme of the area kind of uh, got a lot of exploration involved here. Seismic, exploration, drilling and appraisal drilling. Guyana drilling in, in frontier parts of the, the basin, the range of play. Really excited to see what's, uh, what's announced in that region there. Suriname has 10 ENA wells planned in 2026. And Trinidad awarded frontier acreage in uh, the ultra deep water areas to Seanook and ExxonMobil. Developments continue in Guyana and plans for Suriname to follow, including gas developments for both countries. Uh, initially, they were oil developments. Other blocks have been very slow to be awarded for Guyana. The uh, shallow water blocks have been a few years since uh, that licensing round, but hopefully they're up and running before too long. And finally, uh, Trinidad and Tobago trying to catch the momentum of the wider area and have had some success with ExxonMobil committing to explore a new deep water area. So watch this space and we'll see future developments. There's going to be a news announcement due in a, an upcoming video very shortly. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and listen out for some exciting news. Bye for now.